Welcome to the 2021 Field Operations Webinar Series. My name is Pat Hall from Esri, and I'm so glad that you're here. Field employees didn't typically choose their career because they love computers, but a tablet in the truck can make their work much better in some surprising ways. A very large segment of gas and electric utility workforce is in the field, and these hardworking employees need the best tactical awareness to stay safe and to serve customers effectively. This is a two-part series on field operations, and the focus is on utility employees that get out to smell the freshly cut grass in the morning, doing work in the real world, and how to strengthen them in that work. Today, part one is going to focus on better tactical awareness for those employees. Next time, we'll look at tools for collecting and capturing data in the field and making that process easier, making it more accurate and faster. Make any adjustments you need to on the control panel and please ask questions as we go along. In this short webinar format, we're going to get you back to work in just 30 minutes. That means you will get a link to the recording and a document that answers all of the questions. For much of my career, it has really taken a lot of effort to have good awareness in the field. This was my first company car. I have a question for you. What seems more antiquated today? That 70s van in the background? That vintage tow truck? Or the idea that I had three plastic milk crates of printed circuit maps in the back with my hard hat and rain gear. Now I had one of the special circuit map sets. I received updated prints every month, so they were only one month out of date. That is if I filed all of the updates right away. I checked the weather on an AM FM radio or just by rolling down the window. My purpose in showing this to you today is just to highlight how much things have changed. When this picture was taken, I had no cell phone. I did not have a computer on my desk and there was no internet. But sometimes old habits die hard at utilities. Yet many, many utilities are asking about mobile field solutions and particularly with the addition of sensors, there's a pressing need to give our field staff much better awareness. GIS as a utility tool has grown into much more than a tool that engineering uses to make maps. Today, ArcGIS captures very detailed information. It helps to understand and visualize it and share it with everyone that needs it, particularly in the field. The ability to have excellent awareness of the work environment and the system and the customers is far superior than what we have been accustomed to. Today, we want to explore tools that can readily improve field work and make it better. I remember one morning, we all reported to work at the field office at 6 a.m. During my commute time, a truck had hit a pole. We had wires down in the street and were scrambling to get on scene to make repairs. I saw the lead crew supervisor, Chris, sitting in the ready room, working on a computer. I don't think I hid my frustration very well when I asked him, what are you doing? We have an emergency. He showed me that he was looking at past photos of the poles. He went on to explain that he wanted to understand how it was built so that he could take all of the right materials. He wanted to know which direction to drive in from, what traffic control he might need, and where to tell his crew members to position the trucks. Chris was smart. He wanted tactical awareness before he even started working. I'm joined by Kyle Crawford from our Charlotte office. Kyle, thanks so much for being here. Hey, Pat, thanks. I'm really glad to be here and I can't wait to show off what we have prepared for today. Kyle is a fabulous solution engineer and he and I are both part of the Esri utility team. We are here to help you. So please do not hesitate to reach out to either one of us if we can be of service. In the next 30 minutes, we're going to look at improving tactical awareness for field staff in a way that makes their work better. I'll start with a brief introduction. 
Kyle will walk us through some typical workflows, and then I'll explore a customer example in Texas. Finally, we'll wrap it up with some takeaways and lead into the second webinar. Utility work is dangerous. It involves a constantly shifting environment. And when situations change quickly, success depends on real-time awareness. And everything a field employee cares about has a location. This is why geographic tools presenting things by location makes work easier. It makes perfect sense. The best tools provide access to detailed information, and they also promote communication and collaboration. They put information quickly in your hands and enable you to share that knowledge with coworkers. Paper processes tend to grow backlogs of updates to be handled, and this leads to stale information, compromising decision-making and potentially even safety. Esri solutions provide clean ways to facilitate the various aspects of field work. Esri field solutions address the needs of those supervising and working in the field. Let's take a closer look at what it means to strengthen field work with better understanding. Better awareness that translates into how you do your work, stay safe and interact with the public. Kyle, we're ready to see some examples of how to improve that understanding of work sites. Now in this section, you're coming at this from the bigger picture with the dashboard. I'll turn it over to you. Great, thanks, Pat. As an operations manager, one of my main tasks is to keep operations moving smoothly, efficiently, and most importantly, to ensure the safety of my field staff. And the best way to achieve this is to be as prepared as possible. Today, we have multiple crews working out in the field, conducting various assignments. So the first thing I want to do is understand the current state of conditions before my staff head out for the day. To do this, I'm going to use this dashboard, which is going to help me understand the conditions and any hazards that I need to be aware of. The first thing that we're taking a look at here is the real-time weather conditions that could possibly impact the work we have scheduled for today. Now we're doing this with a variety of different layers from our Living Atlas which is a catalog that Esri makes available to their users. This catalog includes thousands of layers that can help us understand weather patterns, demographics, and provide other insightful information, including layers provided by various data partners. In addition to current weather radar, we can also view any current weather warnings. We would see here a couple of the pink ones here indicate uh, red flag warnings, and this one indicates uh, a fire hazard that we might be aware of if we were out in the west. We're also leveraging a partner service from DTN that shows real-time lightning strikes that have occurred over the last five minutes. Now this is gonna help us get a current assessment of any events that could be impacting us right now. Of course, we also need to see what could impact us in the future while out in the field. I can turn on this layer that shows us the participation forecast. This gives us a sense of rain that could get in the way of the work we need to do today. Also, from our partner DTN, we can get a forecast of lightning strikes and where they are right now and also where they predicted to be. Right now, we're looking at these current and future weather events at a national scale. But of course, we also want to zoom in to our own service territory as well. Here we can see we might be expecting some rain throughout some of our service territory. We can also see we have an area of predicted lightning strikes as well. So now that we've taken a look at some of the weather events, we can look at other hazards that can potentially impact us today. In this case, I want to pull up our site hazard application that allows me to navigate to a particular site and see other hazards and conditions we need to be aware of. One of these could be the amount of outages this area has experienced. In the right column here, you can see and investigate any potential hazards. We see that we are in a particular service zone, and once I open it, I can see how our outages range over the course of the year. Depending on when we are working in this area, we can see if this is a regular or a higher month of outages compared to some of the other ones. This would help us detect if we may run into irate customers while working in this area. Of course, I can scroll through some items in my column here so I can assess other hazards. In this case, these are hazards that are being collected by other field personnel while in the field. So this can vary from irate customers to a violent person that's being detected, an aggressive animal, 
It could be flooding, or it could be road closures. It could be a number of things that our field staff encounter on their day-to-day -day work. Anything that our field personnel need to be aware of is being documented from people that are on the site and can view that before we even enter the field, which is important because then I can be aware of the hazards that my staff may encounter ahead of time. Next, I want to look at what we call our tapestry segmentations. For those who aren't aware, tapestry segmentations are how Esri leverages multiple types of demographics to classify different neighborhoods using a variety of demographics so we can understand spending behaviors, hobbies, income levels, and so on so we can get a sense of these unique neighborhood classifications. What's great about this is if I open this flyer here, we can get an idea of what these communities value. So if we're in a community that really values green energy, we can obviously do some campaigns in there. Now for me as an operations manager, I may want to know maybe where we have people that might be sensitive to tree trimming in the area as well. Since that's obviously a very important job, we need to be aware of what areas might be sensitive to this type of work. It also could be that I see they work long hours in front of a computer, which means if they're computer based in the year of COVID, they very well may be working from home. So people may be nervous about them getting kicked offline. So I might want to schedule this work either during lunch hours or after five o'clock when most people are done working for the day. By leveraging this dashboard that combined all these wonderful data sources together, I was able to quickly review the various hazards my crews may encounter during their day. And now that I've completed my prep work, I'm going to head out to the yard to conduct our daily safety briefing. So back to you, Pat. Thank you, Kyle. Nice job. Well, you showed a lot there. What stood out to me was the data that field doesn't normally have good access to. You know, many times field doesn't have access to customer information. Showing all those kinds of things in one place is very powerful to increase their awareness. And I really appreciate you highlighting the catalog of data, not only weather, but it includes things like soil composition and satellite imagery that can all impact work. Okay, Kyle, speaking of work, we're ready to go do our work. You did your safety meeting, great job. Now, show us what this looks like for crews on site doing some typical tasks. Great, thanks, Pat. In this second demonstration, we're going to leverage Esri's new flagship mobile application called Field Maps to show you how you can maximize your situational awareness. RTS Field Maps is a new mobile app that combines data collection, map viewing, and location tracking capabilities into a single app that's easy to use and simple to deploy. With ArcGIS Field Maps, you only need to download, sign into, and work with a single app. Maps are only downloaded once, and Field Maps saves space on your mobile device by eliminating the need to duplicate data across multiple apps. Field Maps is all a mobile workforce needs to conduct inspections, collect data, track worker locations, and perform other activities in the field. This is just a brief overview of field maps, but don't worry, we will be jumping into a little more in our second webinar, so stay tuned. I wanna showcase how we can alleviate the various pain points that come up when trying to access vital information while in the field. Like many of you, one of the first things we might do while grabbing some coffee in the morning is to check to see how the weather might impact our plans for the day. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab my tablet and launch our field maps application. We can see here that we have some rain that moved through the area, but other than some wet ground, we should be okay to continue all of our work that we have planned for today. For this demonstration, we have assembled various workflows that represent the work that our crews may encounter on a daily basis. Within our list of assignments, coming from either workforce or a different ticketing system, we have a report of low voltage at various meters that needs to be addressed immediately. To oversee this assignment, I'll be assuming the role of the crew supervisor who has been tasked to respond to this report. Since this is critical, we're going to head right to the area so we can assess the situation from there. So my crew and I have just arrived on site, so the first thing I want to do is to get my bearings of how our system is laid out in this area. By leveraging my mobile map book, we can see how this area is fed by the rest of our network, as well as the location of our assets. 
We can also see that we are still having reports of multiple voltage alarms being detected from our AMI system. And most importantly, we have a critical customer that's being impacted by this event, which puts more pressure on us to resolve this issue. In addition, I was just notified over the radio, we have more low voltage alarms being reported in this area, which I can see also displayed on the map here. Most likely the root of this problem has to be occurring upstream in order for these alarms to be going off. Since I have the ability to view my entire network from my device, we can start to trace back to see what assets are feeding these customers. It looks like we have a switch up the road at the corner of Eastdale Road and Legacy Circle. This intersection also looks to be pretty busy, so let me meet with my team before we head over there so we can plan out where we want to set up our trucks and where we need to have some traffic control to keep us all safe. By leveraging this real-time information, we are able to quickly get familiar with the assets we have in this area and navigate upstream to identify the potential source of the problem. Then by utilizing our high-resolution imagery, we're able to visualize the potential hazards we may face while operating at this intersection. All right, well, while this crew continues to troubleshoot the cause of these low voltage alarms, let's go visit another work site to discuss how we can prep for a pole replacement that another crew will be tackling today. As a crew supervisor overseeing this project, the first thing I don't want to do is to get an idea of the environment my crew and I'll be working in. So as my crew finishes up gathering materials in the yard, I want to take some time to gather any information that will help us complete this job as efficiently as possible. The first thing that pops up at me is our job is in a location that has experienced above normal outages recently. So you want to be really sensitive when we go into this area. Currently, these are some unhappy customers, so we're going to be really careful before we shut their power off again. And we're going to make sure that we contact as many of them as possible to notify them ahead of time of the work that we'll be doing in the area. I also can see that we have a customer that has been flagged as being violent towards our employees in the past. So I might want to consider not approaching this customer without the police being present. Along with any hazards, I also want to see if we have any critical customers in the area. It just so happens that we have a customer here that requires power for medical equipment. So we're going to do everything we can to not disrupt service to this customer. And if so, maybe we need to make sure we have a generator on standby in case we have to take this area offline. Now I also want to see if we have any photos available of the pole we're going to replace so that I can get an idea of its location and any surrounding vegetation. Just so happens to be that we do have a few trees surrounding this area, so we want to make sure we bring the right equipment to handle this job. We also want to take into consideration how we intend to set up our work site, and a few questions come to mind. Like where is the best place to set up our truck so we don't block driveways? How is the site visibility to oncoming traffic? We also want to figure out how we're going to manage the traffic in this area. We might want to think about what traffic control we need. We might need uh, to have some extra signs, some cones, or maybe additional personnel to flag the traffic. And these are all great questions that can be addressed with the information we have right in front of us. And we can gather a lot of insight by just taking a look at our imagery. We see here this looks like to be more of a residential area, and the traffic should be pretty low since we're conducting this job in the middle of the day. Great, now that we've taken a look at what we might expect at this location, the crew and I are ready to head out to the site. Once we arrive, one of the first things we want to do is notify the residents in the area of the work that we're about to begin. While knocking on doors to inform people we'll be working on their block, we learned of a critical customer at this location. So we want to make sure that we capture this vital information on our map here. We can then share this data with various teams within our organization so everyone is kept up to date on where our critical customers are located. This is really beneficial when it comes to storm responses or when we're doing work like this in the area. Now finally, while in this area, I noticed we were missing a few overhead drops on our map. So I just want to take a few seconds and add a note indicating there's a mid-span tap that is right off this line and it goes right to the corner of this house. This will allow our records team to make the correction in their system to help ensure our data is as current as possible. So not only can we leverage our mobile map book to get the information that we need, we also can collect any information that's helpful to our organization. Now that all our prep work is completed, our crew is ready to get started on replacing this pole. By leveraging our mobile map book, we are able to quickly assess the targeted work area before heading out. We are able to view key customer information and evaluate the environment beforehand to come up with the best course of action. All these resources allowed us to easily gain the required awareness needed to conduct our work in the most efficient way possible. Now as this crew gets started on this pole replacement, let's go visit our last work site to discuss how we can leverage our mobile map book to gain awareness while preparing to work within a transmission corridor. 
Now that we have arrived at our transmission corridor, I noticed this location is actually surrounded by preservation land. While operating in these locations, we want to maintain awareness of sensitive areas along our patrol route. This may include any regulatory requirements, which may relate to animal habitats, cultural resources, exclusion zones, and notification protocols before we can even operate in this area. We also want to be aware of how we can gain access to this corridor. Navigating to these type of areas can be difficult because most of the time they're remote places and most of the roads are unpaved and there's no street signs for you to get around. So it's key that we have access to this important information in our mobile map book. As we see here, our access road is clearly defined on the map, letting us know that while traveling on this unpaved road, our speed limit needs to be reduced to maintain safety. While our crews are operating in this area, they will be patrolling looking for various things such as vegetation encroachment, excessive conductor sag, broken insulators, evidence of tampering of equipment, and any unauthorized construction in our right-of-way. And I've shown a lot about how we can leverage our mobile application to gather situational awareness while out in the field. But be sure to come back next week where we'll be discussing how we can leverage Esri's field applications to capture key points of information while out in the field. While we're on the topic of speaking of transmission corridors, would you mind sharing that story we discussed earlier, Pat? Thanks, Kyle. That was great. First, I want to say, having the full detailed and current system map on my device, let's not overlook how powerful that really is. And then the ability to put real-time feeds like SCADA right in the map, well, that saves a lot of time and phone calls. You also showed several examples referencing other information. And that is exactly what my friend Chris was looking for. Transmission Patrol is another great example relating important information to location. This works in the real world, and that's what I want to tell you about. A couple of years ago, I met several workers from El Paso Electric. They told me about how they use GIS to track sensitive areas on their transmission corridors. Now their field staff are expert line workers, but they are not experts in animal habitats. It was fascinating. Some sensitive areas like wolf dens cannot be physically marked for fear of the public interfering with those sites. It was really tough for the crews to know what rules applied where and how to follow all of the proper procedures. The utility needed a better way to ensure that the crews stayed in compliance while performing their jobs. El Paso decided to deploy an ArcGIS smartphone app to give the crews better awareness, and they loved it. It provided all the information they needed to follow the law and protect the environment while focusing on good line work. With the app, the phone numbers to call or any related documentation is always just a click away, and it immediately took the guesswork out and saved a lot of time. The app shows their electric infrastructure with the sites and habitats and other sensitive zones, relating them all to the crew's position. Brilliant. It adds information about permits, easements, and notification processes. And the staff love that this app runs on the same smartphone that they already have in their pocket. It doesn't require a separate device. What a great example of using data and location to strengthen field work at El Paso Electric. I'm anxious to see what they come up with next. We've seen that because virtually everything in field work is tied to location, ArcGIS is an ideal way to bring together all kinds of data to understand it and get it conveniently in the hands of the field staff. The detailed network, real-time feeds, customer information, great data improves awareness out in the real world. The capabilities to increase awareness in the field, they have come a long, long way. And the things we showed today are really very straightforward to implement. I'd like you to think about how access to this kind of awareness could strengthen your field work. Talk about it within your organization. And as you do, be preparing for our next session. You can do that by considering what information comes back from the field, inspections, work orders, as-built, or notes. 
If you have that clearly in view, I think you get even more out of the next session on collecting and capturing data. Please plan to join us on the 21st for the second session in the series, Collect and Capture. We'll examine various ways and the convenient ArcGIS tools to facilitate these kind of routine field activities. If you've watched the utility marketplace, you've seen that some niche field solutions don't fit well into the bigger picture or into the corporate IT very smoothly. I want to stress that ArcGIS is designed as a system to fit into the entire organization. And to give you a better sense of this, we're going to end today with a fun little video clip that puts this idea in focus. Thank you for your attention. We hope that you will join us next time. Let's roll that video to conclude. Thank you. If you're an electric utility, you know, the old grid is changing fast. You've got to adapt to the future by amping up renewable energy, solar and battery storage, and microgrids. You also know everything in utilities happens somewhere. And since getting location right is so important, turning to ESRI gives you the power you need to stay ahead you get the most advanced capabilities in the industry from the world leader in location technology. With our integrated GIS platform and huge partner network, you have access to groundbreaking solutions and a complete GIS enterprise system. Network management tools with True3D let you visualize your system the way it looks in the real world and bring your design to life to model and manage emerging renewables. Spatial tools give you a better understanding of your network and assets. Mobile field apps streamline data collection, routing, and navigation. When natural disasters strike, you get real-time monitoring of operations to reduce risks, speed up recovery, and get the power back faster. Tapestry gives you better data on your customers than ever. Plus, an open architecture lets you share maps and apps on any device, any system, anywhere, anytime. And with cutting edge spatial analytics, you can leverage IoT, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to understand the past better and forecast the future more accurately. With S Relocation technology, you'll have everything you need to leave the old grid in the past and power up a full digital transformation.